Hey, I'm Brad Lancaster. It's raining, and I want to show you some water harvesting in action. Okay? Boom! First thing we got here. Neighborhood street. It's raised or crowned in the middle. Water drains to the curb on either side. Flows along the curb, and we have cut the curb to allow the street runoff to go into a sunken mulch basin, which is lower than the street, to passively and freely irrigate this native food-producing velvet mesquite tree and others like desert ironwood. The great thing here is these trees then grow to shade and cool the street from which the water comes while controlling neighborhood flooding downstream. Love it! Okay, there's more of that going on here, but that's for a different video. Right now I want to take you into the house and here we are at the gate. And as you can see, we got a lot of sweet on-site harvesting strategies going on here. And they're all integrated to make them more efficient and juicier. So um, let's look at a few of those here when we walk down the path towards the structure there. Um, all this water from the path drains into the sunken mulch basin to passively and freely irrigate that citrus tree, turning rain into fruit. And this section of roof from the main house goes down this white downspout underground behind the sapote tree and up into the gutter of the porch of the garage. A one car garage turned cottage. Nice. Let's take a closer look. Okay. So we have this covered porch and we've created this dry stacked retaining wall which uh, holds and supports uh, a raised planting area with a white sapote fruit tree, uh, tasty organic greens and wild chili plant and we've incorporated a bunch of benches, stairs into it so it doubles as a little seating area. But I want to take you to the roof where this ladder leads. Okay, check out some juicy things there. This is an old salvaged playground ladder. Would have gone into the dump, but it was saved. It's being reused. So this porch was built to handle the weight of many people. So we can hang out here, use it as a terrace, check out the street scene, say hi to the neighbors. And when it is sunny weather, there are clouds. Or, I'm sorry, right now, but when it is sunny weather, you can see the mountain view from here. All right, but let's turn back around and we have a, uh, this section of roof goes into that gutter, comes down the downspout and across the uh, white roof, painted white so it reflects the summer heat and it's a non-toxic elastomeric paint by the Safe Coat Company. Uh, that water then goes down the gutter and into these two 1,000 gallon rainwater tanks. And this other section of roof, the longer section, goes into that gutter and also drains in to those 2,000 gallon tanks. No pumps, no moving parts, all simple gravity. Love it! Okay, and here's a thing that uh, maybe is not so common. Um, this section of roof over here goes into that gutter, drains into that white downspout pipe we looked at earlier, comes underground, and then up this brown pipe and into the gutter, okay? And uh, it's only drizzling now, so we don't see a lot of water, but right there, water's dripping on through. That water came from that roof. And the way it works is that whole pipe fills with water. And once it's filled, because that inlet point is a little bit higher than this outlet point, where the water overflows is here. And then it moves via gravity down into those two tanks. Love that! All right, so let's now go back down and I wanna show you some ways that we passively and freely filter our water, okay? So the water comes down the gutter, uh, hits this rain head screen, so the screen is at an angle, so the debris is cast off, and all the water goes down 
into a first flush pipe. Let's get a different vantage point of that. So if we come back here, okay, there's the rainhead screen. And when we get the first flush of water coming off the roof, the dirty flush of water that's got the bird poop and dust that's accumulated on the roof uh, since the last rain, that all fills this section of pipe. And there's a screw cap end on there so the water doesn't drain out. So the dirty water fills up that section of pipe and then the clean water that follows it goes directly into the tank. All right? Now, key thing about this system, well, first, you got to have that screw cap. So you can come here, I can unscrew this, and then I can let the bird poop fertile water naturally fertilize my grapevine. Nice! And irrigate it. But uh, this grapevine uh, then will grow over this whole trellis in the summer months to shade and cool the cistern water. Very nice. But I want this, you to see this first flush pipe in context. There is the main door to the garage, okay? This is the main hangout spot. So this first flush is super conveniently located. So we see it every time we come in and out of the structure. So we remember to come and unscrew it, drain it before the next drain. Otherwise, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't, it wouldn't grab the first flush of water in the next drain. Okay, and at the same time, by doing that, we're able to irrigate the food-producing grapevine so we get more grapes, more shade. All right, and then we're still using free simple strategies like gravity to take the overflow water from this tank it goes behind the fence. We're keeping the overflow pipe high, so again, using gravity, we're able to distribute it to this raised planting bed. So we got a super sweet slow it spread it sink it action going there. Water comes from that roof, goes down, goes up there, goes into there, fills up, overflows, goes back and infiltrates there. No water wasted. So here's the overflow point. And our tanks are currently full, meaning maybe I gotta get some more tanks. Okay? But we're still not losing that water. It's being infiltrated into the soil here, okay, for free. And uh, the soil is our largest and least expensive tank. So way cheaper than a tank to do it this way. And uh, this water is then totally saturated, this part of the bed in these rains. And it is flushed and leached the salts out of the basin that periodically receives gray water from our laundry shack. Let's take a closer look at that. Okay. All right, the laundry shack. Okay, but let's go into this solar-powered laundromat. Here we have the washing machine. We only allow people to use uh, no-sodium uh, soaps. That way we don't kill our soil by using the wrong soap. Instead, we keep things good and healthy. Um, and here next to the washing machine, we have four uh, um, drain pipes that go to the landscape. Each pipe is labeled with the tree that gets its water, okay? And every time we do a load of wash, we take the drain hose out of the pipe that was used in the last load, and we move it to the next pipe. So every load of wash sends its water to a different fruit tree. So we distribute the gray water around. Nice! All right, and let's put it in the white support day for now, just so you can see Water goes down that pipe, and then out here, along here, and daylights above the mulch in this basin, so no roots can grow into that pipe, all right? And all the water goes beneath the surface of the mulch, so it meets the Arizona Gray Water Guidelines, all right? Nobody can come in direct contact with standing water, because there is no standing water, all right? So we grow fruit with ours and our neighbor's dirty laundry. Love that. Okay, there's another thing going on here that I want to show you. So you remember this white downspout pipe, okay, which goes um, under the ground and back up to the garage porch? Well, this is a wet system called that because it's always got water in the pipe, okay? 
Um, and right here is a T in that pipe. And it outlets here to another screw cap. So after the rain, we can flush water out of this wet system. And uh, I will unscrew it there. And then all that fertile flush water fertilizes that citrus tree. Yes! All right. So um, again, this first flush is located in a very convenient place. It is along the main path to the garage, okay? And it is also by the front door of the main house. So it is very convenient, not a chore, to release the first flush water after a rain before the next one. And you gotta be real careful with these systems in cold climates. Typically cannot do a wet system in a cold climate. Uh, because if you've got water sitting in that pipe, when things freeze, you're going to crack that pipe. So uh, if we have super cold weather, which is not that common here, um, I will open that up, let the water out, and then it will be dry uh, in the freeze and no cracks, no problems. All right. Well, if you guys that are watching this are into any or all of this, then I got to say... The books for you are these two sweet honeys. Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond. Cannot recommend them enough. They're going to tell you everything you want to know about the water harvesting I just showed you. And also how to harvest the sun, harvest shade, local food, and a whole heck of a lot more. And if you want to get still more information, check out my website, harvestingrainwater.com. Thanks for watching.